and welcome once again to another episode of the Horizon Roundtable. I am Bob McDonald, and you can find me on Twitter at Bob McDonald. And joining me is my co-host Jimmy Lemke. Hello, everybody. How are how's your uh, well, whatever the time is for us, it's Sunday morning or Sunday for afternoon. I'm, I'm an hour ahead. Of you remember that? And, and uh, that's j- true. Well, the, you're only just afternoon. You're just eight afternoon. minutes. Ahead. So let's 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 pump the brakes here. Well, forgetting the fact that people are going to be listening to this whenever. So, good yeah, day to you all. You're... Good afternoon. Good evening. And good night. Yeah. Good. Good. Uh, good Monday afternoon. Good Tuesday at two a.m. Good whatever day and time that you're listening to this. There you go. And, and Jimmy, glad. of course, is on uh, is on Twitter at PantherU, and you can you can follow the podcast on Twitter as well at Horizon RT. So, um, Jimmy, I have to say, um, now last episode I had mentioned, uh, I, I had mentioned a, a couple of the schools, um, and I, I, I feel bad because I think I might have cursed them. Um, yeah. Horizon League had a really crappy week this week. Uh, this week yeah. they went, uh, against Division One, uh, against Division One teams, not counting IUPUI beating, uh, IU Kokomo. They went three and fifteen. Three and fifteen, yeah, including on Saturday, which I I honestly expected. Looking at the Saturday schedule, I saw at least three or four wins out of that Saturday schedule. They won none of them, none of them. It's true. It's yeah. It I, I don't. It, it doesn't make any sense to me. It doesn't. I mean. I look at the Horizon League. I look at these teams, and I I don't see them being as bad as the as these as these you know box scores suggest. I don't see that. Well, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm a complete imbecile and don't know what the hell I'm talking about. Which incidentally, you know, you know, we haven't been told otherwise, so that might not be true. I don't know. Or maybe I maybe I've been and I ignored it completely. Um, but still, the fact that you had winnable games the entire week, winnable games the entire week, and you were uh, from a Division One standpoint only able to win three of them. It's not. It, we we've talked about it a couple of times. About at what point in time do we start looking at this conference and saying, "Man, maybe things aren't going to be. A, maybe we haven't turned the corner. Maybe we maybe maybe we hadn't hit bottom yet. Maybe last year was just a taste of the craptacularness that was coming this year." I didn't want to believe it, but man, I don't know. I don't know. I'm I I don't. I'm not seeing the improvement, really. And maybe that's... And maybe that's where I'm missing something. Also, I may also... But but one one particular disappointment this week I, I want to point out. And again, I, I might, I'm kind of going to blame myself on this one. Because last week, I talked about Green Bay um, beating Belmont. And, yeah. uh, you know, the previously undefeated Belmont, they hadn't, won, they hadn't lost a game yet. And they, you know, they come and face Green Bay and they, you know... Green Bay just, you know, beat them pretty handily, you know. So, last episode I mentioned the fact that, you know, perhaps, and perhaps Green Bay is still, you know, is still a potential spoiler within the Horizon League. And I'm not really, I'm not really waving, I'm not really waving myself off of that opinion, but on <clears throat> Saturday, Saturday, Green Bay goes up against a Bowling Green team that has already lost to Detroit Mercy. They played yeah. Cleveland State earlier this week. Cleveland State ran them out of the uh, ran Bowling Green out of the gym. I mean, they won by like eighteen against Cleveland State. Bowling Green, you know, by all by all by just by the eye test, is not that great a team. If you're losing to, you know, if you're losing to Detroit and if you're losing to Detroit Mercy and Cleveland State, not necessarily saying they're you know they're not bad teams, but you know, look at the records. There's not too right. much evidence to the otherwise. But Green Bay goes to Bowling like, Green and loses by almost 30. How, it's the, not like, how the hell does that happen? Surprise. I don't get that. Yeah, it's not like there was some big surprise that Cleveland State beat Bowling Green earlier. So well, Bowling to be Green's fair, it did, uh, that game almost did not go as we thought it was. I did not uh, – the way that Cleveland State started that game, I, I am extremely pleased by the fact that they won by as much as they did because they Cleveland State started out that game – 
very poorly. I think they were down by 11 at the beginning of the game, and then they just went off. Tyree Appleby scored 38 or 37 eight, and you know, 37 with eight boards and eight assists. He was on. He was legitimately on. Uh, he was legitimately on um, triple double watch. Which, by the way, we should. Uh, in before I get any further, I just want to say congratulations to Targus Ferguson. Pretty sure it was Targus Ferguson who did in fact get a triple double earlier this week. That's fantastic, and um, those are it's it's amazing to me because we have so many yeah cause, and he did it against Illinois State too so that was a that was actually right. very very I thought that was a, for Illinois State which is one of those teams that is and has been regarded as one of the top team has been for many years regarded as one of the top teams in the in the Missouri Valley for for UIC to go in and and beat them you know by as much as they did they they put 94 on Illinois State and you get Targus Ferguson who puts up a triple double which is even rarer cuz you don't see that very often he got 12 boards and 11 assists um, so, so congratulations to him, regardless. Yeah, and congratulations to UIC being one of the few teams that, you know, their their record. I think of all the Horizon League schools, I might want to give them a pass given the competition they've had. Um, but still, uh, going back to Green Bay, Green Bay, of which I talked about uh, last episode, about they have so many different weapons that. I I would think that they would have go, uh, gone off on they could have any one of them could have gone off. Yeah. yeah, any one of them can go. Any one of those uh, those players on that Green Bay team can go off at any given game. They're <laughs> very happened? talented the kids. They uh, absolutely linked they, arms with each other. Absolutely. So program. what? So, Sandy Cullen is a great piece, and they were oh, really lucky is. to have him leave Marquette and be able to pounce on him. Absolutely. That was, great. That was good for them. I'm, Absolutely. I'm very happy that Green Bay is able to come up with a player. Absolutely. But he's not the only, he's not the only one. No, he absolutely isn't. That, Any one of them. I mean, kid, the one guy that actually, Hemphill kid is legit. Yeah, Tan Kemphill, the one guy I didn't mention last last episode, he's the, he's the Rising League Player of the Week last week. The one guy. <laughs> So, so that's what makes it a little bit more of a head scratcher that you have all of these weapons on this Green Bay team, and you and we've seen them. You have all these weapons, and they still get trounced. I mean, Green, you know, Bowling Green put ninety seven on them. It, it, uh, yeah. So that, again, that that leads me to believe that you know that the, you know I I might have I might have cursed them, Jimmy. This might be the curse of Bob might be in effect on this one. Well, that I, that I, that I said nice and things about them, and I'm they turn around and get oh. crushed. I don't know, man. Yeah. This is why I stopped doing. I stopped doing. Uh, I tried to not. Uh, I, I I can't tell you how many when I was still when I was still writing my column. I can't tell you how many times I wrote like nice, you know, wrote you know positive things about Cleveland State, and then like subsequently the next game something absolutely mind-bogglingly terrible happens. I <laughs> and I blame myself sometimes. I, I maybe I'm I'm just I, I you know I'm maybe I'm the kiss of death, Jimmy. I don't know. The easiest the easiest thing to do is just not take a stand. Uh, uh, speak strongly, but never never say that you're going to be. You know, this is definitely what where we are at. Is this this is the, this program can do this? This program is fantastic. You don't know. You just you really don't. Apparently know. not. Apparently I'm uh, apparently I'm I'm too gu- I'm too glowing in my compliments, which. I, I I didn't think I'd ever I didn't I I don't necessarily strike myself as somebody who's overly glowing or you know you know but apparently I am and apparently so 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 I guess I should take this time out to 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 apologize to Green Bay's men basketball program I'm sorry I put entirely I'm sorry I put entirely too much on you what can I say I'm sure you guys will do better in the in the conference schedule. Oh well, yeah, because they're playing Horizon League, they should be fine. <laughs> exactly. So yeah, maybe maybe that's it. I don't know. Yeah, it's it, it's it was just a weird thing. Um, although yeah, so it, it's been just kind of a weird. It, it's been just kind of a weird conference sli- non conference slate all around. Um, I mean, even you know, even you're just. I, I just don't see. I'm not seeing the wins. I'm not seeing. I'm not seeing, you know, the, I, I, I'd like to, uh, the, just from a, you know, just from, if you kind of get into the, get into the guts of these rosters, you, you, you see theoretical improvements from last year. Last year was horrible. I mean, you, yeah. but you look at this year and it's like, you know, they should be better. But, I mean, but then you look at the standings and, you know, you have, 
you know, most of your teams are sub five hundred right now. I mean, what is it? That's that 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 doesn't that doesn't make sense to me. It, it, it's kind of it's kind of frustrating, I, and and then just saying it from a standpoint of, and I'm just kind of looking at it. Not everybody, I mean, exactly. So you, know, you look at the standings right now. You have three Horizon League schools that are above 500 in the standings. Everybody else is below 500, and I, think, I can't I mean, make heads or tails of it. I mean, Wright State being four and six bothers me. Okay, that, um, I'm glad you brought them up because losing, that losing is what I don't. It is okay. Losing neutral court to Penn State and SMU is okay. Um, losing on the road at Indiana State is kind of bothersome. This last weekend, though, th- this last week game. where they lose to <laughs> yeah, they lose to what? They lost to Miami and they lo- they lost to Miami and they lost to well, they lo- they lost to Miami and they lost to Kent State. And those are two honestly, those are two teams I thought for sure Wright State was going to be able to you know be able to beat. Kent State has yeah, you know, Kent State. You know that should have been a winnable game for Wright State, and they they did not win. You know, I I saw Miami should have been a winnable game, and it wasn't. Yeah. And so that it, it, I'm not really understanding kind of the I'm not understanding what's going on here. I'm really not. I mean, ever since they you know they started this you know they they started the season three and one. They beat you know they beat Western Carolina. They got the good. They had that that win against the Toledo. Pretty pretty convincing win over Toledo. Um, they won by twenty against Toledo. No, I'm sorry, ten. Sorry, ten. My bad. But you know they 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 dominated that game, and then you know they beat North Florida. So they started the, they started out pretty good, and then ever since then they lost five out of six. This is yeah. the same team that was picked to finish in the picked to you know picked by a lot well, of people so, to finish at the top of the conference. For the sixth game, the sixth yeah. game the, of five out of six. The losses. The sixth one, though they won, was against a school called Cedarville. Another demo- Yeah, exactly. That they only scored fifty-eight points on too. Uh, yes, which is another head scratcher. And <laughs> don't even tell we- me that. Don't don't try and tell me that Wright State can't score because they. No, beat we know up they can. Carolina, scored ninety-six on Western Carolina. They scored eighty-four on Toledo. Which yes, is a good team. it is. But for for them to get beat twice in a row, once at home, to in-state max schools is bothersome because oh, absolutely. In a lot of ways, the Horizon League for it to really succeed, for it to be you know get back to its pecking order, the best teams in the Horizon League have to beat their in-state MAC and MVC opponents. They do, and they took care of business with Toledo. Yeah, but I thought they were well on their way. If Miami of Ohio and Kansas State beat them, and then you know like you know teams. Like Akron are beating Cleveland State, like the 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 MAC and and the real battleground in Horizon League versus MAC war is obviously in the state. the Ohio. It's, it's Ohio. Yeah, it is. That's where we have most of the programs. Yes, and I'd even count Northern Kentucky as part of that since they're in the Cincinnati Metro. So you know we've had four teams in Ohio Metro areas. They've got what five? Yeah, the MAC uh, has. Uh, yeah, so the MAC ha- in Ohio, I, the MAC I, has. We can stay Toledo. Am I missing one? I'm sorry. I, I, you, uh, I'm sorry. Say five. it again. They have Ohio, Toledo, yeah. Kent, Kent State, Akron, Miami of Ohio. Am I missing any? You're missing Bowling Green. They have six. Oh yeah, I've, yeah. We I've just pers- spent a time talking about yeah six. Bowling Green. Yeah, so yeah, you are correct. So yeah, I think roughly, roughly a little. May I think they have what twelve, thirteen teams in the MAC now, and I think they have yeah you know, six of them are in the six of them are in Ohio. Plus you have the direction. Yeah, so. So yeah, so and and every and every single Horizon League team plays at least uh, specifically in Ohio plays at least three of these MAC schools, at least three. And I don't even. But you're absolutely right. It's the for the Horizon League specifically the Horizon League. It is all about the and specifically as it relates to the Ohio schools. It's all about beating those in-state MAC schools. Yeah, and it, it, and. You know, and you look at the records, it's, it's, you know, it's disappointing. Now, mind you, of course, you know, you have, you know, Cleveland State, Youngstown State having to, you know, Cleveland State is one and two against in-state MAC schools. You know, they, but, but Wright State, Wright State is the one that's a, that's a real head scratcher. And you beat Toledo, but you lose to, but you lose to Miami of Ohio, you lose to Kent State. It's, it's a little mind boggling. It really is. You know, not to say that that's a, you know, not to say that that's a, I mean, it is a bad thing. Especially when you think about, think about it from a standpoint of how exactly, you know, when you compare that to 
you know, think about when you think about that and compare that to, say, a you know, a, a, a Mac team that, in fact, I saw. Uh, I think Mark Adams actually put out a list of the top fifteen conferences that had uh, based on their non-conference uh, winning percentage. Max yeah. up, Max up there. They they're 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 a tick over fifty percent. They're in the top fifteen. <laughs> and, of, and, it, and it kills me that a lot of the Horizon League teams are the reason they're a tick of about five hundred. In Ken Palm, Horizon League's best school is Northern Kentucky, uh-huh. eighty three, strong school, right? One twenty five in Ken Palm. Yeah. Wright State is next at 144, 4 and 6. They're playing a stronger schedule. So the 4 and 6 is at least expected. Then you go to 174, also 4 and 6, UIC. Mm-hmm. 192, IUPUI. So your 6 and 3 record at IUPUI is a little bit smoke and mirrors. Not quite what it what we're what you're excited about. Green Bay two oh three five oh four. So that's the fifth team in the Horizon League is already in the two hundreds in Ken Palm. This is strikingly scary. Well, not only that, the, but if you know, we've strong. been well. Yeah. The other thing too is that not just Ken Palm, but if you look at those, uh, if you look at the you know, the NCAA is publishing the net standings now, and it's not any better. In fact, in a lot of regards, it's worse. Um, I mean, you right now. I mean, as of last Monday. When you know when when I last checked on the uh, when we last checked on the on the net standings, you had probably I think two or three Horizon League teams that were sub three hundred with uh, with Youngstown State down to three twenty five. Uh, Northern Kentucky one twenty two, IUPUI one twenty seven, UIC one fifty six, Wright wow. State one sixty one. Oh jeez. I mean, that used to be good for, like, the middle, you know, that used to be good for, like, four through seven. Yeah, it was. But there was a time, like, like we used to, you know, we'd have, uh, Milwaukee, we had a lot of people who loved to disparage the, you know, the, the, the Rob Jeter teams that were, like, you know, that, that were finishing, like, fourth or fifth. These are, these are teams that were at, like, 107 or 115 in the RPI. Yeah. And you had three teams that were close or into the top 100. Yes. You know, Wright State would be in the 80s. Valpo would be in the 50s or 60s. Back when Butler would be in the 30s or 40s frequently. That was just that was just how it was. Cleveland you know, State was knocking conference. on the door of the top 100 consistently. Yeah. Consistently. I mean, they like to, you know, bang their, like, their, oh, fifth place or thing. But the conference was a lot better. Fifth place in this conference doesn't impress me one bit. No. You know why? Because fifth place in this conference is still in the worst in the worst half of college basketball teams. That is garbage. That is hot garbage. It, it's and again, it it I don't understand. And and I it's so Green Bay is scratching one, to me. Green Bay is one ten in the net, by the way. One ten. Okay, that's good. So to have three teams in the top one twenty one thirty, that's fine. But it still probably would have five. Yeah. So, obviously. And yes. And again, this is as of you know, we record on Sunday, so you know, obviously the is it yeah, what, what is it five, is as of which five, games? This is as of shoot, this is before the recent games. Oh Jesus! So, so it, it might get worse actually. Well, so is, it was probably early. So it was probably from last week. No, it's through Friday. It's through this Friday. Okay. Not well, not it doesn't count. It doesn't count the Saturday game. So. Um, but we know that he, so yeah, I know we're, we record on Sunday, so, and I know that we, the, the net does come out on Mondays, so, um, Monday or Tuesday, the, the net standings come out, the updated ones come out, so, um, so as optimistic as we are about last week, <laughs> I use the word optimistic as a, uh, as a very loose term. Yeah. Um, next, uh, this, uh, this week's, uh, net is probably going to not be as good as what Jimmy just, uh, Jimmy just listed out for us. And I'm out, and out of curiosity, how many of those Horizon League teams are under 300 now as of last Friday? Two. Let me guess. Cleveland State and Youngstown State still. Oh no. Or is it Detroit? Cleveland, Cleveland State is 233. Detroit is 237. Really? So who are the bottom two teams? So I guess that mean, I guess that went against Bowling Green did some wonders. Nice. All right. I'm, I'm good with that. Actually, that's weird because that doesn't make any sense to me because Detroit got beaten like a drum by both Dayton and Toledo, and there are two. What what was their number again? Two thirty something. Two thirty seven, I think it was. Yeah, two thirty seven. They were previously two thirty eight. 
Okay, and Cleveland State is what now again? Because they were at 309 when I last saw them. 233. Really? Wow. And I don't think, I don't, honestly, I don't think either of those numbers are going to change because Cleveland State's playing a D1, D2 school, Notre Dame College. Well, as I said, we're recording today, but, you know, they're playing them today, so that's not really going to move the net needle at all. And Detroit didn't play this weekend. Oakland's but, wow. that's so, 26. So who are the bottom two teams now in the, uh, if you don't, because uh, I, I, I don't have the net, the current net standings on me right now. So who are the bottom two teams right now? Milwaukee is 301 and Oof. Youngstown and Youngstown State is 321. So pretty good year for Youngstown State if uh, all things considered. Um, <laughs> well, I mean, they did they did win a Division 1 game this year, so they got that going for them. To co- to compare, Oakland in the net is 256. Mm-hmm. In the in the Ken Palm ratings they're 240. Youngstown State is what was it? 320 321. Yes, 321. 321 in the net, they are 330 in Ken Palm. Oof. Milwaukee is 301. In the net, Milwaukee is 282 in the Ken, in Ken Palm. Interesting. Detroit is 237 in net, 288 in Ken Palm. Math is weird. <laughs> That, Cleveland State yeah. two thirty three in the net in Ken uh-huh. Palm in Ken Palm Cleveland State is all the way up to let's see oh excuse me backwards to two seventy three all right well it's it's yeah but and, it's because what, what what were we saying about Green Bay Green Bay was the best team right yeah what? they were what one ten I think uh, and they uh, they are not one ten in net. Ken Palm one ten was at in Ken Palm they are yeah. both two oh three wow. So we, we we see some weird disparities between the two ratings. It's it's but we've always seen I, that. We've always seen that for years though. Not, it's um, net. I just wanted to get an idea of where the net was because I was hoping the net would be more closer to Ken Palm because when you look at the end of the NCAA tournament, the teams that mm-hmm. tend to do well are teams that tend to have high cut Ken Palm ratings. So. That's it, yeah. This is that's that's accurate. But so, yeah. Right, right now, the, expect- it seems like the yeah, it seems like the it seems like the disparity didn't go away. In fact, in a lot, of, in a couple of the cases, it actually got worse somehow. Right. Um, so that is that's. Bottom line is that you know, no matter how you shake it, though, you know, the Horizon League is is just not doing themselves any favors in the non conference right now. It's just not. I mean, you True. can't go. You you as a as a as a conference, you cannot go. You you can't go three and fifteen. In Division One games in a week, you can't go zero and six on a on a day uh, on a Saturday. You can't have you have to win, and it's not happening. And it's I'm you know it's frustrating to us because you know and just for our respective schools, I can't even imagine how frustrating it is for 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 a Wright State fan right now. I can't yeah. imagine how frustrating it is for them coming into the season with those expectations of being the most being the top team with the Expectations of competing and being the top team in the conference, and to have a four and six record, haven't won a Division One game since before Thanksgiving. You got to be frustrated out of your mind right now. I can't. I yeah. So, but and again, it, I'm, it, it can't be just, and it's probably not just. Right state. If you're a Northern Kentucky fan, you got to be frustrated by the fact you just lost to you lost to Eastern Kentucky on a buzzer beater. Yeah, Eastern Kentucky that should have been a you should have won in a walk, and yeah. they get Eastern they get bested itself. in a buzzer beater. String. It's you know, uh, and I'm sure the frustration is setting in for not just you know for 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 the top teams, but the bottom teams. If you're a Youngstown State fan, when are you know? You know how frustrated are you that you only have one Division One win in two years? How frustrating is it? To, how frustrating is it? You know how frustrating is rated is are you as a Cleveland State fan that you're only you know you're only three and seven right now? You know, in fact, I think the only team that are, the only fans who probably aren't aren't terribly frustrated right now are is is Detroit Mercy. Yes, you got blown out by Toledo and Dayton earlier this week, but still you. You won. You probably won three more Division One games than you thought you were going to win. I think. I think with them, a lot of it is let's just be happy with what we have for the moment. Exactly. It's, it's at least going forward. Yeah. I can't but say it, in Milwaukee. I can't say that. No. 
At Cleveland State, I can't say that. We're not. We're not good. <laughs> it's 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 frustrating. Um, I had a I had, I talked to a fan who is who actually went down to the game they played against. Uh, they played at Cincinnati. Yeah. This was uh, a few weeks ago. Uh huh. Um, obviously they lost, but it was a good showing. Um, they they only lost by eleven. They were there. They they were tied at halftime. Like it was a, it was a good game. But he brought up to me that uh, he was in the crowd. He was behind the bench, and he was sitting behind. Um, he was sitting a, a couple rows behind Amanda Braun. Oh, and your the, favorite person. Yeah, and the reason he was calling me was to let me know. Uh, he, he, he said, "Hope you know, I wanted to let you know that Amanda Braun spent the entire game on her phone watching the women's game back at UWF." <laughs> and I'm like, "What?" And he's like, "Oh yeah." She didn't watch one second of the Cincinnati game. She was staring at her phone watching a women's oh. game while she's at a high major supporting, well, quote unquote, supporting a men's bas- the men's basketball team at this school at Milwaukee. Mm-hmm. Seems that the women's basketball team has taken precedence, which I I don't I don't I don't hate that the women's basketball team is getting attention. I like that they're getting attention. I don't think the time to give them attention is when your men's basketball team is playing at a a power school. Which while they're in the American Athletic Conference, Cincinnati is still, in my opinion, a what I would call a high major or at least a. Oh, Cincinnati absolutely is, I think. I, right. I so, don't, yeah. So what are you doing spending your time at this game? Not talking to fans either. Like, she's the uh she this this person noticed a couple fans talk to her but it was cuz they went up to her like she wasn't going talk to she wasn't talking to the fans she wasn't trying to you know pitch i, I think it was was hey I'll take the free trip to Cincinnati and wow I'll, I'll keep tabs on what I really care about back home if the if there's an experiment going on at, at Milwaukee and this is uh, this is this is what this person posited to me and I I don't think it's a stretch if there is an experiment to consider whether or not a, a ask, athletics program can can succeed by follow you know by by putting all of your efforts towards your women's basketball program that like can you can you build a true revenue program out of a women's basketball team um the answer is most definitely no and we know this because green bay doesn't rely on huh. a basketball program green that's bay even, bold strategy cotton let's see how that plays out you know like like that's that's the kind of shit that we're looking at at this school is we have an athletic director who's more focused on the women's basketball team i'm i'm i love uh, I love Kyle Recklich. I think she's a great coach. I think that our women's basketball program has a successful future ahead of it. I think they're pretty good right now. But there's nothing about women's ba- This is This is the NCAA. Yeah. Your athletics program is based on what you do with your men's basketball program, what you do with your football program. We don't have one. What you do with your yeah. hockey program, we don't have one. Yeah. Um, Milwaukee has an opportunity. We have, a, we, have an inter- we have an interesting opportunity. Yeah. In the uh, in the very in the very near future, possibly mm-hmm. this, possibly this spring, it's supposed to be this spring. We have a, a very very solid possibility. I wouldn't call it solid, but it's a interesting possibility of turning our baseball program into something into something real. Uh-huh. It's going to be difficult, but it could it could be a thing because we are getting a stadium, a legitimate stadium. Yeah, where they'll be able to charge tickets if they want. They'll be able to charge for cos you know uh, concessions if they want. Uh-huh. They'll make money money if they can if they can figure yeah. out if they can do that all the more power to them but uh-huh. i'm not i'm not holding my breath this okay. is a, the point i'm getting at is men's basketball is your bell cow what in the fly the crown jewel of your athletic this is it, it, it is exactly what i was talking about last week last yeah. episode why are um, you spending anything yeah any I mean, time whatsoever paying attention to the women's basketball game while you're at the men's basketball game that is a. You can see it in how. Why'd you go then? I mean, I mean, seriously, why'd you go? I mean, don't get me wrong. I'm sure Cincinnati's a fun town. I haven't been there in years, but I, you know, I'm sure it's. I'm sure it's a fun town. But I mean, I wasn't there. I wasn't at that game. Yeah. People reached out to me, so I talked to that, that guy. Talked to me. Told me about it. I talked to one of the fan, the other fans that I knew was there, and he said, "Oh yeah, we were talking about that. It was weird." What? But wow. I hadn't talked. He, but he and I hadn't talked in years. So he. Yeah. So he's like, I didn't feel like I, I wasn't going to call you on it, but but yeah, I got no problem telling you that's exactly what was going on. Holy cow! Scary, isn't so, it? it? Yeah, I mean, and again, if you're, you know, that's it, this and that's the problem. I mean, well, and you know, and that's the problem, especially 
Um, especially for a, especially for a Milwaukee team that is not good right now. That needs, especially in the men's basketball, that needs, um, that obviously needs a little bit more in the way of support. That's not a good look. I mean, it really isn't. Nor is it, of course, a very good look when you're, you know, when you, nor is it a very good look when you have an athletic program that, uh, you have an athletic program, you have a ba- ba- basketball program that's uh, currently, uh, what, three and seven, and uh, your attendance numbers are the lowest they've ever been. Um, looking at you, Mike Thomas, at Cleveland State. And then you leave. <laughs> Add on a little bit more chaos. Throw another log on the fire. Make it somebody else's problem. <laughs> I mean, well, I think we, and, I think we and this is, it's, know why that was. Why, uh, did he, why did he leave? I think we got a pretty good idea. I mean, he, the, the official reasoning, I, I think I mentioned this last week, the official reasoning is that, you know, he's doing it for personal reasons. Apparently, yeah, apparently he, he's gotten... He's gotten some consulting. Apparently, he was doing consulting before he got to Cleveland State, and apparently, uh, the story is he's he's um, he's going to be moving down to North Carolina. Which, let's face it, if you're a Cleveland State graduate, a bunch of you have already done already, because most of us aspire to leave Cleveland. Apparently, um, not me, um, but um, but apparently, the the idea is, I guess he got some. He's going to be uh, he's going to spend more time on consulting, which apparently pays more than the. Pays more than being an athletic director, I suppose, and doing some teaching as well. That's that is his whole thing. And um, as I mentioned, and and that's fine. I mean, if it's a, per- I'm sure it's a, I'm sure it is. He's doing it for per- purely personal purposes. Pure but why now? Purposes, yeah. I mean, seriously, why? Why? You know, if it's a personal decision, great. Okay, well then. Well, why? Why at the end of the year? I mean, is it like some sort of fiscal year thing I'm missing or something? You know, it, it, you know, am I am I missing that part? I mean, it just seems so abrupt, and I, I haven't, you know, I haven't put my fingers on it. I mean, is, is the situation in Cleveland State that bad where you're just like, I'm announcing I'm getting the hell out of here at the end of November? Good luck to all of you. I mean, I think there's some. I don't know. It's just so. I I don't. Under, it's. It, it, it's it's weird. It's weird, and again, it's it's weird. In a, it's weird in a year where, yeah, and, and I'm speaking beyond the Cleveland State part. You you know, the the Horizon League need you know it, that affects the Horizon League too because right. you know you, now you have uh, you have a an athletic director. Now you have an issue. You know, you ha- now have a a vacancy, an athletic director vacancy in the middle of basketball season in your conference when your conference isn't doing all that great in the non you know against you know against division one competition in the non conference. So you throw that you know you throw that little you know you know variable in there. So it's just it's it's just a weird the whole thing is just a weird situation. And I mean good luck to him. Godspeed, have a nice day. Don't forget to write. Don't forget to never come back. Um, the, apparently Illinois fans warned us that something like this is going to happen. Um, I don't give a shit. I mean, honestly, bye. Have a nice day. I mean, seriously, if you don't want to be here, don't be here, man. I get it. At least you, at least, you know, at least you decided, screw it. I'm, I, I, I have better things to do with my day to be athletic director. Yeah. Fine. Knock yourself out. Good on you. At least you, at least you, at least you admitted it to all, you know, at least you, you decided to walk away as opposed to, you know, dragging it out for years and years and years and getting nothing accomplished. Better now than three years from now when things look worse and things could potentially be worse. That's fine. I'm, I'm good with that. I, I mean, the, the circumstances just seem kind of strange as all hell, but you know, that gives, that gives Cleveland State some time to figure out, you know, They'll have an interim, you know, they'll have an interim, they'll have some time to figure out, you know, nothing's going to change in the next, you know, for however long it takes them to, you know, do the search. Nothing's going to change. Attendance is still going to be, the the attendance issue isn't going to be addressed. But you knew that, go, but you knew that, you know, I guess, you know, write it off, deal with it next year, I guess. I don't know. It's, it's you know, nothing we could do about it. It's a done deal. So you can't you can't really cry over spilled milk on this one. I say that now, and then of course I'll probably go on Twitter later on this week and bitch about it. But you know that's just just but you know that's me and it's par for the course. So whatever. <laughs> um, but yeah, that's that's kind of but and, and it's it, but it, it, I'm glad you brought this up because um, you know this is what's going on in the bottom two teams in the Horizon League. You have a Milwaukee situation that's a head scratcher. You got a Cleveland State situation that's even bigger head scratcher. Um, 
Youngstown State is still Youngstown State, apparently. Um, and it's, you know, it, it's... Depressing? It, it is. I mean, it's, you know, depressing, frustrating, whatever you can call that, you know, whatever that... You know, choose your choose your adjective, Horizon League fans. You're sitting, you know, you're the guy. We're all the ones sitting here paying attention, and you're probably, you know, most of you are probably sitting there wondering what the hell. I mean, any, you know, it would be very helpful for for the Horizon League to be doing so much, uh, doing better than they actually are, and it's just not happening. And so, yeah. it, it's got to be depressing. It's got to be frustrating. And I, you know, we'll, we'll go into the con- we'll go into the conference slate at the end of the year, and it's going to be. You know, I, I I I almost envision a scenario where you have like seven of the ten teams being any having a record anywhere between um, anywhere from a record between about you know you know, you know five nine and nine to you know six and twelve. I see that for the for 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 I I can see that as a realistic expectation for. For her, like uh, again, not even the top half, bottom half of the conference. I'm thinking, you know, at this point, I'm thinking four through, you know, uh, you know, four through ten could have that, have those records, that record range, and that's not good. Especially if you just spent the entire non-conference schedule not doing so great at all. I realistically, you know, this is a, it is a very scary scenario where you could potentially have five or six teams in this conference finishing below 500 for the entire year once everything's all said and done. That is not a good look for the conference as a whole. I'm hoping and praying that this isn't that that's not going to be the case, but you got to look at it and you think to yourself, "Holy cow, that's a problem." So, this is the state we're in. It's just eventually just going to be This is the st- what that's the thing. This is the state that we've been sitting over here. We thought we were over already. This is really the I thought we were done with this shit. Nope. I thought we were over this. This was supposed to be the turnaround year. And it's not the turnaround year. So what do we do? What, wait till next year? Well, I mean, I'm going to have to wait till next year. I mean, I don't know. I think but, I keep longer than that, but... Oh, God. Well, this is, this is, this is not a... This is not... This is... This is shaping up to be the nightmare scenario that we all hoped was not going to happen. And we're running out of conference, non-conference games. For sure. Non-conference schedule is good. Non-conference schedule is over in... Non-conference schedule is done in like two weeks. Conference schedule starts on the twenty eighth. All right, starts at the end of end of December. And you don't have that many. You don't yeah. have any chances left, and it's not it. You know, it's it's not happening. So, wow, I was hoping not to end this show on a downer, but yeah, here we are. So, <laughs> <clears throat> all right, so um, we're gonna wrap the show up here. As always, you can find episodes of the Horizon Roundtable on SportsHacks.com, H-A-X.com. And you can find uh, episodes of the Horizon Roundtable on your favorite podcast app, be it iTunes, be it Pocket Cast, be it TuneIn, be it Google Play. Um, my favorite now, yeah, we're on Alexa. Uh, just say, you know, and, and, you know, of course, we're on Google Home. And, of course, we're also on Spotify and iHeartRadio now, so that I'm, I'm still kind of jazzed about those, uh, those appearing on there. So. No excuse. Subscribe. Zero. None at all. Your, your excuse can't be Bob and Jimmy are assholes. You, that can't be your excuse. Yeah, you, if you're listening this far into this podcast, you're, you know. You're, you're set. You're, you, we've hooked you in. <laughs> so, yeah, so um, so that that's going to wrap it up, and uh, thanks for listening. Take care, everybody.